<laughs> Hello, <laughs> welcome back to the uh, another episode of the Green Room Podcast. Uh, we are at the lovely Franklin Theater, the jewel yes. of downtown Franklin, of Main Street. Home of first kisses. The home of first kisses, yeah. <laughs> uh, we thank them very much for allowing uh, them to... Are allowing us to what was that? <laughs> use yeah. our, their green room to hold yeah. the actual green room podcast yeah, because thank it's you. a green room and it's a green room. This is the green room. Yeah, this is the actual green room at the Franklin Theater. So if you were to perform here, this is your green room. We we did a pilot a while ago and it was in his in room. My bedroom. And we made a joke about it not being in a, a really green and room. look at the walls. They're actually green. That's what I was saying. It's a green room and it a, green a green room. room. That's what yeah. I gestured to the wall. And you know luxury when the ceiling isn't white. So you know it's a good spot. Yeah, you, got, you can't you got, see the you ceiling. You can't see it. Trust but us. It's like a metallic. It's it's cool looking. It's sweet. Anyway, I, I'm your <laughs> anyway. co-host, Massimo Stefano. I'm Brendan Ayton. I'm not Massimo uh, Stefano. Yes. And uh, thank you for joining us. Brendan, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? I'm, 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 good. I, um, I'm good. I'm pretty... It's cold in here. It is cold. Yeah. We're I don't filming, know why. We're filming at the exact same time as the first episode, but it got really cold in here. So, outfit change. How you? What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, a, do a little twirl? Yeah. Um, but yeah. No? Okay. I'm not doing a twirl. Okay. For you. you want me to get up and twirl <laughs> not for my our outfit? YouTube <laughs> No. You have to viewers. Pay me for that. Uh, you on. heard it here, folks. <laughs> he will get up and twirl if you pay him. Uh can we start GoFundMe? Yeah. <laughs> or another website. <laughs> I think we also again have to shout out Liquid Death. Yes, just shout because out Liquid Death. Uh, if you didn't watch the first episode or watch any of my content on YouTube, uh, they liked a, a post of mine because we shouted them out in the YouTube video. I drink it all the time. He he does. I, I don't drink, it, all drink the time. it. If they sponsored me, the I would. Sparkling I would one drink is cool because it. it's like San Pellegrino a little bit. It feels yeah. It doesn't. It's like San Pellegrino, and then the normal the what the like the standard the still water is nice because it's it's the way it's the delivery system. It's like it's like it's not the you know, water bottle. It doesn't just, scrunch in your hand. You want as the you metallic the can? I I just can't. I love the delivery. It's like drinking a Do they soda only serve or water? Like is there stick the water in the can? Or do they Yeah, like, it's only water in cans. I'll have to try it. I think they now have iced teas that just came Liquid out. Liquid death, like you can make water. that happen. You can you can turn me. I would I'm, love I'm for you guys to, to sponsor us. I'm a huge fan. If, I, if every they podcast send me I, a bottle of Liquid Death, I would... A bottle? More like a case. Whatever. Sure. Whatever they want to do. Every podcast I listen to is sponsored by... Literally every single podcast I listen to is sponsored by Liquid Death. So why I'm, not I'm us? I'm open to why being not turned, us? so... Why not us? I, why not us? Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Today anyway. we've got a couple of things we're going to talk about. Uh, we're talking about Nashville, where we live, and the music Nash world. Nash Vegas. That it, <laughs> that it is. Home of bachelor um, parties and amazing musicians. That's right. As well as more about the Franklin Theater, which we'll come back to later. Yeah, in the day. yeah, yeah. Because um, we love this place. Yeah. We love it. Um, it's a good spot. But yeah. So Nashville, everyone knows it. For uh, country music and the country hats and the... And the, and the boots, boots. And, the <laughs> and the girl and, and the bro. girls on their uh, bachelorette parties oh, on the stupid trolleys. They're not the, stupid. They're awesome. The, have you done one? I've never done them, but they're awesome to look at. They're so the funny. Clog they're so of traffic and they're so entertaining. And you know, you it. always have someone's butt hanging out of the seat. <laughs> like it's, I don't want to look at it. I don't want to. It's so look at funny it. because one time I was I was walking by one and like it was a whole bachelorette party and all these girls going. Woo! You know, their pink cowboy hats yeah, and, the, pink. and the, the, the sashes and all that. And then the mom is in the back just like this. Her arms just crossed. Her arms crossed. <laughs> just, just looking out. She had sunglasses on, so she just looked like she hated. Oh, it was so funny. I was laughing so hard. I think I was with some buddies. We Dude, Broadway people beforehand. are a different breed. I just went I just went down there Man. the other day just to kind of scout it out. Yeah. I had a friend of mine, Chasley Pie, if you're watching this. Thank you very much. I had a lovely day. Yeah, uh, We just went. We didn't like... It was like a Wednesday yeah. at like noon and it was bumping. I was like, and people were like drinking. Yeah. And I, was, I was like, do you just like, just they open come at 10. on Bars open at just... 10. Bands start at 10. Bands go from 10 I mean, that's until cool. 2 a.m. the next Actually, day. Actually, I will say it was spring break. So that it was during. Is also why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, when I. But it wasn't so, just like college kids. So I out, had so. the pleasure of working as a PA in the first season of Barmageddon, that Blake Shelton show. Wow, really? And, um. Barmageddon. We were there until 4 or 5 a.m. most nights. And then I also worked the loadout night. So we worked through the night after Oof. filming to load out because we had to be gone by 10 a.m. the next day so they could open the you bar. You got paid for that. Oh, yeah, I got paid. It was awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, I got paid. But uh, <laughs> I, I wouldn't do it for free. I mean, it was <laughs> like, okay, I, let, me, let me clarify. You got paid I would do well. It for, to I would have, honestly, I would have done it for less money than I got because it was a great experience. Don't tell them that. No, I'm not. 
Doing you just next, said it. They already started filming the next season and they didn't ask me to come back. So, so that you didn't do a good job. No, I think they just want to use different production company or just okay. call different PAs. They probably just didn't like what anyway, you did. but <laughs> we were working right on Broadway all night and man, at 4 a.m., you look out on because we were at the top of the rooftop bars or whatever, and yeah. you look out in the street, and it's, it's just so cool. It's cool, but it's you so also cool. see like street come alive, like oh, the yeah. real. I was the real when Broadway. I went out that it's, it's a one wild time. adventure, and I don't go up to Nashville that often. I live here in Franklin. It's for those of you that know the do. geography. It's what 20, 25 minutes away. If with no with 30, no 30 minutes with no traffic, you can get there in twenty yeah, minutes. Yeah, at like four in the morning with no traffic. But if Not you're four if you're going any time between two PM and seven PM, it's gonna be forty minutes. Yeah. Or in the morning 40, the work 40 rush. Minutes. From Franklin to There's a small slot in the middle of the day where it's not bad. Yeah, yeah, like the one o'clock ish, or like like eleven thirty to one. Yeah, well, kind of. yeah. well, then there's lunch, and then yeah, exactly. doesn't matter. Anyway, anyway, so I don't go there that often. I don't really play on Broadway, um, but yeah. it's a different breed of people, man. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's a lot of tourists, and when tourists yeah. come together, it's a lot of cultures, and a lot of people coming together. Yeah, it can be good or bad. Oh yeah. Well, I I when we were when me and Chansley went up there, it was we went. <laughs> I loved. It. I didn't realize Tootsie's was. Uh, Oriented small the way it the way it was. So we walk in. There's a the stage which is smaller than this chair, and there's a, like right at the window, and it's the drum kit. It's not even an 18 inch. I bet kick. it's the it's, probably, it's probably like a, a 16 inch kick. Like it was tiny, yeah, tiny, tiny, tiny. And and then you you go up a flight, and it's like, oh, okay, this is like a yeah a moderate side stage. And then you go up to the rooftop, and it's like, oh, it's bigger. You know it's the, great. The roof, and, oh. You know that first floor of Tootsie's is mono? Yes, I do know that. You know what I didn't realize? Mm. Is that the the soundboards are up on the wall, like vertical. Yeah. I, I had never yeah, so you gotta seen that. that. And I was like, I don't know Save why. Space. I just never occurred to me to like do it like way. Yeah. I guess it's my own experience, but I was like, that's so cool. So my roommate, Nick, right now, he does sound some nights at Tin Roof on Broadway. Yeah. And he has to control all three levels at once. So what do you mean all three levels? All three floors. <gasps> You're kidding. So he, it's on an iPad and he has to go from floor to floor and like run up and down and change lights. And Are you kidding? I'm being serious. Now I think he gets lucky and sometimes he only has to do two at once. Or He told me he has to Bro, do Bro, tin roof, pay for another man. Oh, Oof. Yeah. Or I don't know why they're doing it. I would love to do it and I don't want to slander them because I think it's a good job and I'd want to play the end work That's there. great. But, but it's an oh interesting Oh my gosh, move. that stressed me out. Yeah. I mean, he tells me that it's a good time and he gets paid for it but i mean it's good if he's if he's killing it that'd be a lot of anxiety for me dude bro although i mean if you if you really think about it there's only so much you can do on broadway and everything's so in and out and everyone knows the yeah. gist that it's just making sure nothing blows up essentially Basically. for the most part once they get because each band plays for like three hours i know so once they get rolling in the first 20 minutes you're just kind of like all right i'm just changing lights at this point yeah you know what i mean and i, f I feel like oh i forgot what i was gonna say nice <laughs> Pro podcasting. I've, oh, oh, I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember. I feel like uh, that's going to happen a lot. I just want you to be aware. I'll I'll go somewhere else up here and just. And then just be away. Yes. For a bit. That's, yes. I can, I can feel okay. space. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> I feel like they've done it this long. The engineers with all those cables running yeah. everywhere and the, the wooden buildings. And it's like, okay. Well, I think if anything is going to catch fire, it would have been like 10 years ago, you know? I think he was telling me they try to, for the most part, have as little mics as possible on stage like there was a rumor at the oh, yeah. i think i remember talking to you about this a while back that all of broadway i don't think it's happening but i think it's actually starting to go into effect a little bit is getting rid of all their onstage monitors and gonna have in-house in-ears and then my own. they're I'll also switching well if you can you can still bring your own but I they're know. gonna like have at least a pack or something a pack and you can use normal headphones or whatever but then they're also gonna have electronic drum sets and you choose your own drum set <laughs> Massimo, we uh, love the whole episode in and of itself of drum samples. We, and that we're we're going to be doing a lot of talking about drums because um, we both play and we both have very different opinions. Very on the sample different. Thing. I'll I'm a briefly fan. just say, just get an acoustic kit. I know it might be better just, if you're not live. So, why wouldn't you? It's it's for you want to get the best sound. Why not get the best sound? I get if you're in an apartment, if that's all you got, <laughs> if you have. All, you know, I can't wait to do that episode because it's going to be the most argumentative thing. It is, ever done. and I'm not changing my mind. Me I don't. Neither. It, good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I want you to change your mind, but like, you're not going to change my mind. Uh, just like that thing whatever. we talked about in the last episode. It's genre based, I think, also. And well, if you can get know. good recordings versus not. Anyway, 
Um, but the, the, there was a rumor that they were all going to switch to like the really nice like Roland like with full shells like tiny drum sets, and you can either bring your own like samples or choose your kick and snare before the show, and then you can like, customize. Bring your bring yeah, your own cool. set essentially. Like I'm not saying it's not cool. Yeah, it's it's versatile. A thousand percent. I will say you can do every, a metal band and then a country band right next to each other and oh, not yeah. change the setup at all. Well, every kit that I saw was acoustic. I don't think I saw one electric. I so think that they're, they're doing like the, implementing it now. Well, or I'm just, wondering if that was just a that that those two things that I heard. One, the drum part was just a rumor, and the headphones was a reality. I feel like it's it's too iconic. To I get do rid of a drum honestly. Kit. I'd like the idea of if every place had on, like because they only need four or five on stage. Not like they're doing a whole like thirty mics. You know what I mean? No. Like, like if every had it, those little like Behringer, the small little headphone packs. That yeah, yeah, yeah. You just bring, and then they just put when you get head when you sign up for the gig, they just bring headphones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I kind of like that. More, yeah. more centralized. You could actually hear, and you can pop them if you want to hear the audience. And I as, guess as a Patreon, I think it looks cooler to see in ears and have them yeah, popped. I think it's, it's more, more professional. Of a visual. It looks it's more cooler. professional. But then you look behind the singer, and it's like, oh, there's an electric kit with no shells. And well, to me, that's, that's like. I think, it, it takes can I tell you something? Visual, I think we think differently because we're musicians, but I think non-musicians don't notice. If it's a nice electronic drum set's yeah. full shells and just the tops are like mesh. Wise, I get, I get where you're coming from. But no, I mean, even visually. Vis no, man. Not I the get, symbols. Well, not there's, the symbols. The, there's the kits that have the shells. That's what I'm talking about. Thing. That's what I'm talking about. I feel like some bars are going to be like, Oh, it's just the the actual pad. There's and yeah, it's gonna look stupid. Well, they make those really nice electronic drum sets where they look like real yeah, ones, yeah. full shells. I play one of those. It's yeah. cool. I also think, but then it's like, I wonder if well, the way to put some heads on there. I wonder if what they'll do is have an option to have just the snare sample and not bring mm. your snare, and they'll have a snare with the head on it, and you just bring your cymbals. I will say, that'd be kind of nice. That I because when I was down, all there, you bring is your cymbal bag. I saw these drummers with their carts. They got. The cymbal bag, the snare drum, yeah, the throne, exactly. and then other bits and bobs that they got to carry with them because something's always going to I don't know wrong. if you've seen they have those I snare mean, drums. Where I got to get a I got to get a cart. Yeah, <laughs> I got to get a cart. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen those snare drums where the rims clip on and yes. off. Yes. What if they have a version of that for electronic drum sets My with man. a kick drum, like with the kick head? They have oh, like a really? sensor they can just put on and off. So you can put it on, mute the head. I, I, don't say, I don't know if this is real. I'm saying what if they had that so that if someone wanted to use a real the real yeah. kick drum that's right there take the pad off use the kick drum but if you want a sample or you like if you're in a metal or pop on you need well, a click are people gonna really do all that for a for a three hour set on Broadway people are they gonna really be really that serious. are they gonna be that picky the step after Broadway is like tour. they wouldn't do that at the bottom floor of Tootsie's Maybe no, the top floor. No, I but doubt like, even the second floor. I bet you Blake Shelton's would, and I bet you Kid Rock's would, and I bet you yeah. Honky Tonk, like the big ones. The bigger ones, yeah. I think I think you're right. Kid Rock's might have an electronic. The thing we're talking about, the big. I think they might have them. Or one of those Was bigger just, ones. Is I that think. the one with the, the band's on the second floor? It's the one where the band is on like a. They have their like levels and their stairs that they can go up, and the drums are the highest up. Yeah, but yeah. there's this big wall of windows behind the drummer and everything, and then the, yes. the bar is like this one rectangular and it's got nice... in the middle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I was there seeing this incredible band and this girl. She like I I guess people do that all the time. Kenzie Washington, she, I follow her on Instagram. The blonde? Oh no, she might have died. Already. No, there's she, a girl that plays there. Maybe her name is. Kenzie. She's like really skinny blonde, mm -hmm. and the band was like. I think the they might have a house band. band. Like in his thirties, she looked like she was in her. 20s. I think they might have a house band and artists like singers come in and out. She. She she seems like she does that a lot because like I think spe specifically Broadway. Every time that I've that. been there, it's the same band with different front people. Really, that may have just I've just gone there on nights That's where cool. I just got lucky because I've only maybe those are Wednesday afternoons. So. I, I actually don't go to that bar often. I choose other it's ones nice. before that. It's but it's packed. It is, and I am not that person. I, well, I would know. I was up in the in the balcony, here? and and the you know the 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 PA's are over my right ear, so my right ear is getting blasted, it's blown up. Yeah. I know, but and I had to turn my head, but it didn't even help because my right ear. Was, I was like, we were there. I would be dead on for the sound at like one in the morning, and you're just in a crowd of people like this with your drink. And you're, I so don't that's love the thing. That. I, that's why I don't go to Broadway. I'm like, you know, I'd go if I'm going to play. If I'm going to get paid. Layla's. I wrote it down. Layla's. Here. Yeah. Layla's on Broadway. Everyone out there listening. Me and my dad, it's our spot. Every time I, anyone comes down here, I tell them it's a spot to go. It's yeah. got a big I think, stage. I don't think I went in there. Big stage. You can go up to the second floor and watch the bottom floor yeah. from there. Great great bar with great service. They always have four bartenders for a small bar, which is nice. So it's not too hard to get drinks. Yeah, They have their own custom... I don't know how much we're talking about alcohol or whatever, but <laughs> they have their own... 
custom <laughs> beer that they sell called Lay- their own Layla's Light or whatever. It's five dollars. I think it's the cheapest spot on Broadway to drink. Really? If you want a good time, you mm-hmm. can go to like wherever and get like three dollar beers. But then it's like no karaoke night. Nobody's on stage and it's not a good time. <laughs> like it's on Broadway. It's it's like two doors two doors down from Tootsie's. It's like right there. I think it's right next to Aldine's. It's oh yeah. It's I the like, spot. I, like I love Layla's so much. Shout out Layla's. There was this band. I'm gonna tag him below because they were just going and the the bass player is an upright bass player and they were doing like just like chicken picking kind of thing mm-hmm. and like like just really good stuff and he was a great singer the man throw it above his head and like on his neck and like and singing the same that's like, crazy like would ride it like a horse like the, dude that bass must have been the musicians on other Broadway. bases have not been <laughs> it's musicians crazy on Broadway are crazy dude the, it was insane I, I, um, I don't remember the name of it i'll really tag him below but kudos to them man yeah I mean, that, that's that to me is the epitome of like people that play on Broadway. Like, yeah. they're doing it right. They're going above and beyond, and the crowd loves it. Like, the oh, last two and times, it sounds amazing. The last two times that I've been to Layla's, the one time actually it was the guitarist in my band that I played with for Summer Belt. He was playing with mm. another artist down there, and I actually requested one of the songs that Uh-oh. we play for Summer, and his band <laughs> played it, and they did a different version of it. It was a uh, Wicked Game by um, Chris Isaac, I think is the name of the artist. I can't remember. I don't know. Um, anyway. Um, but Chili Dog is a guitar player who's famous on TikTok. He plays like with his beer bottles and then he puts it over his head. He does yeah, like, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. He's the yeah. man. He's a bigger guy. He's the man, dude. The musicians on Broadway are crazy. And the yeah. other thing about Broadway is like, you know, I can understand if all you think, all you hear about Nashville's CMAs and all that, you just think yeah. it's, oh, it's a country town. They got country, Woo! country left, right. Got my boots. Up, down, left, right, everywhere around you, country. Big and, old bill. And yes, there is a John, the John <laughs> Cash. <laughs> the Johnny Cash thing is downtown and there is a lot of country there, but Tin Roof always has a pop punk band like, oh, yeah. every week. Uh, like it's not just country. It's really dude. And I don't like this whole thing of Nashville's country. It is because it's, it's definitely primarily country. is. It's it a lot more country is. than New York is, a lot more country than LA. Los Angeles is, yeah, yeah. it's a lot more country than Detroit or whatever or Chicago, but it's like it's amazing. The the, the amount of musicians in other genres. Yes. Like, like specifically jazz, with like dude. indie and there's a big jazz scene around here. Well, the Nashville Belmont, Jazz Workshop in Nashville, or Berkeley, dude. Excuse me, the Berkeley here, or is it Belmont? What's Belmont? The, Belmont. It is Berkeley's Belmont. in Boston, Sorry. my man. The Belmont here in town. All the the Belmont. All the guitar you mean players. Belmont. I don't. Why are you all, saying the Belmont? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. All the guitar players that I know and have met, and or even the musicians that I've met and worked with that went there or yeah. go there, are all like hyper jazz. Yeah. Like, amazing. You know, they can read really yeah. well and. And yeah, it's super yeah. proper and all that stuff. But yeah. I, I can always tell when someone's been to Belmont. Like it's I just, the John they Mayer just, they just play a certain way. You said and this one time. Yeah. I did, I did, and I'm like, and it's not bad. It's just, oh, okay, you went to Belmont. Yeah. Oh, you went to exactly. And <laughs> I wonder, <laughs> like lips. I wonder because like it doesn't you know? matter to me either. But I wonder if to other people it does around town. Like if there's certain people around town that don't I think if you're a like good that, hang, I know, and, and you can play, and I don't hate you, like. It's pretty low standards. I also, I have found... You'd be surprised, though. You'd be surprised the amount of musicians that say yes to gigs for genres and music they don't know just to get a gig, mm. and then you're in the pocket, and you're in a gig, and you look over, and it doesn't feel right, even though yeah, being yeah, played yeah. right it doesn't feel right. I think that's important is, is. as a musician to know your strengths and weaknesses and know where to take gigs and where not to take gigs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, like, there's... I want to give this other place a shout-out really quick. Um it's along similar lines. It's this really cool idea. Um, it's called pitch meeting. Have you been in that? No, I haven't. It's at Sunny's in Nashville. No. It's like, okay, so they get this incredible house band to back you up and they do a few tunes, whether it's, they have a guest on to kind of go through the night or, or it's one of the persons in the band. They, they play one of their things. Cause some of them have solo careers and stuff. So, and then there's a sign-up list of an artist, and you have to, you can pick a song of yours. The house band will quickly learn it as you introduce yourself, and then you go, and then you play it. That's cool. Never hearing it before. You just sign up. It's a place to promote. You get some great pictures, great video, and the band just goes nuts. And every time, it's good. Hmm. Every time. And it's like, it's on Tuesdays at like 7 to like they're done, like maybe 10 or 11. Dude, this house band is insane. Really, yeah. Insane. 
I'm going to tag them below because they're so good. Wow. I need to get going on there more. And it's free. You can just go in and there's Sunny's has a bar. You can get food, drinks, whatever. Wow. That's um, cool. Only thing I'll grab about, parking's not great. But that's just everywhere. That happens. And, you know. But I, know. I, I when I was at Dark Horse, they the, one of the things I had to do was go to, like, events. And, like, it would give me, like, <laughs> extra points on a test or something. I was like, hey, I went to this yeah. thing this week to, like, network and, mm-hmm. and meet people. And I would either go to Kimbrough's in Franklin, they're the like songwriters night on Tuesdays, yeah. or I'd go up to pitch meeting and go up there. But, yeah. um, dude, too good. Um, anyway. Franklin, we live in Franklin. Yes. This, this building's in Franklin and, uh, the music scene here is also alive and well. If we have festivals down here, put on by the Heritage Foundation, um, and Main Street Festival, yeah, the Main Street Festival, here. the... I don't know what that was. I don't know yeah. if you guys heard. That. It was a big boom. Uh, Pumpkin Fest and the Dickens of a Christmas. Mm-hmm. Almost every corner on the street has someone busking. On the yeah. Like, I've done that a few times. Yeah. You made some decent money. Actually, the guy, um, there's always a set of violin players that'll be interchangeably yes, playing I know both of them. Here. Jerome. Great. Jerome. Mm-hmm. Do you know Jerome? Yeah, yeah, He was my, uh, my midterm cl- band for Oh, Dark you're kidding. Horse. Yeah. Oh, wow. So we came in and recorded a few songs of his and then... He's uh, good. You choose one to mix for your him and Isaiah project. are great. Yeah, his dad is brother, the piano player. The brothers? I think so. He's got a brother that came. I, feel in ba- a- I really should know this. He's got a brother. If you're I- watching, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I forget your name. He's got a brother that came to play piano, and they both play. Amazing. Jerome and Isaiah are the ones out there. It wasn't Isaiah. It was okay. a different. I was guy. gonna say I don't think they're brothers. Actually, the guy, the f- guy that I'm talking about, some every once in a while I see him fill in out there and just play violin for a while. I think Actually, it's his, Isaiah might be his roommate. I'm insanely surprised at how many violinists and fiddle players are in town. Here, like yeah. just in Franklin, yeah. Like almost every corner, sometimes it's like a different fiddle player or a violin player. I was like, "What? What? Yeah, literally. What? I thought guitar well, I mean, players think, would be going nuts. I think, yeah, but I mean, kind of, you know, how you're just talking about it's not country everywhere. That's right. But, and it's crazy, but it's but it is country, and there's still fiddles and stuff that yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff around. You know what I mean? But in in Franklin here, the two I'd say the two really main places. If you're not like coming to the Franklin Theater yeah. or like like just like not a dive, oh well, Kimbrough's is yeah. a dive, but Something like just like people our age it. that don't have too much of a fall we can get into yeah. is it's Kimbrough's mm-hmm. Pick and Parlor right at the entrance. Kimbrough's Pick and Parlor right at the end, next to Pinkerton Park. Oh <laughs> Kimbrough's yeah, Pick and Parlor next to Pinkerton Park. Okay. Oh yeah, right it's by great. the, it's the just train dive. station. It's a total vibe, and then Mockingbird Theater. Like, yeah. I there's think no other better places. Is like, I feel like. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like if you wanted to think of, like, the in-town, like, in levels, I think you could go Kimbrose, Kimbrose Mockingbird, Mockingbird, and then here, because it's kind of, like, good step up audience-wise. Oh, I don't up. know. I feel like they need to be between between Mockingbird and here. I don't I don't think... I think we're definitely higher than Mockingbird. sell out Mockingbird and have people still wanting to get in if you want to book here, because Mockingbird's 100 and standing, and then this is three. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm saying when it comes to, like... Like seating, like if you wanted to go, like oh, I'm yeah, gonna play you're right. Franklin three years in a row and get bigger three. This years is in a row. different place though than those two. Like this yeah, has got a lot of history behind it. I think those, the other ones. those three venues, it's like a good progression as an artist. Yeah, you want to be like, all right, we're gonna start at Kimbrough's and eventually we we'll get to mm-hmm. Mockingbird. And they're Bird. opening and up after the that, a listening room across the street as I well. Heard, that'll be kind of a smaller spot, but it'll be yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. I, th- I have a feeling that'll be more of like a singer songwriter kind of a chill spot. You yeah, know? not. I as, don't know if it'll be somewhere big names go. I think it'll be like a local maybe. thing. Maybe I mean because I know the theater here wants the big names because we can do that. We do get the big names. We, we do get the big names. I think <laughs> by the time that this is out, Tim McGraw will have performed yes. here. Yes, and that was an awesome show. Have, it hasn't happened, <laughs> hasn't yet, happened yet. As but a, man, as that was now. awesome. Ooh, what a good time. You're working that right? I am working that. It'll be a good. Time. I will probably pop in and say hello because yeah. I've been sky. Oh my! I won't God. get into it. We're keeping that. We're keeping it. We're keeping it. Man, I'm so excited for that show. I actually, I got the pleasure of seeing him across the way last year when I was working the Music City Grand Prix. Oh, wow. In Nashville, he was playing it. It was cool. So it'll be kind of my second time seeing him. Aren't yeah. you so cool? <laughs> <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm not that cool. But um, yeah, the theater is nice here. I mean, so it originally in 1937 opened up as a movie house. Mm-hmm. So back in the day, it was, you know... Come in town. It was like the old school, like we've seen the movies where it's like you just walk by. Oh, what's playing? Let's watch that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Fifteen cents of pop. Yeah, kind of lots thing, of like you know? yeah, yeah. Just popcorn. There's actually a guy around town here. His name's Brother Henry. Brother he, Henry. He rides around oh, on man. a um on a uh, he's he's missing a leg unfortunately, mm. and he rides around on a uh what would you call that? 
it's electric electric wheelchair, wheelchair, wheelchair yeah and he used to work here back in the day i think in the 60s 70s maybe be, that sounds about right a little bit after what i'm talking about but he uh, explains that downtown everyone used to come here and yeah you know because it was that back in the day when movies you know before streaming and all this kind of and even tvs mm. just, you went out you went to the mall you went to the movies you know you go back you watch movies back in the day dude the mall was the spot to go in the 80s. I feel Dude, like you watch. Have you seen um, totally um, what's now. the movie with Sean Penn where he's just. Um, um, oh, you, you know, I'm not good about this. What? Um, <laughs> Fast Times at Ridgemont High or whatever. I think that's what it's called. Oh, and most of that movie is in the mall and it's full. <laughs> and you watch like Stranger Things season three and when they're in the mall. Full. Like, yeah, even like that, that really bad Wonder Woman. It was movie a place that came to- out <laughs> in 1984 in the 80s. And full the mall, packed, yes. Full, dude. The mall was the place to go. I love that you said day. it was a bad movie. <laughs> I mean, I agree. I'm we not, should do a movie listen, episode. I'm a music guy, not a movie guy. I don't care to say what's bad. And I that agree. Was a you know I mean, I'll do the same thing movie. about music. I'll say a bad music. I will too, but I don't want to burn bridges. <laughs> we love everyone. <laughs> we love everyone. I want a career, so I'm not going to say anything's <laughs> awful. No, 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 just, no. Not my taste. <laughs> Wonder. But, um, Wonder yeah. Woman 1984, yeah. Yeah, Wonder Woman, bad movie. But 1939, <laughs> when this was a movie house, it was a spot. And I mean, oh yeah, 1937, 37, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and I no. forget what year it closed down, but I believe in the early, early 2000s, 2000s or something. It closed down. It just, it, it didn't keep up with the Yeah, it just, I think over time, and honestly, maybe the, the just the way that 2000s went with the recession and everything, it just, yeah, yeah, yeah. it didn't go well, and then they closed down, and actually... The community around here kind of really came together. It was a lot of big donors. Yes. Um, actually, a local patron bought the theater and donated it to the, the Heritage Foundation here in mm-hmm. town, which the Heritage Foundation is in charge of the old yeah. building. Heritage Foundation is a nonprofit yeah. for they preserving the yeah. downtown Franklin. Um, and the theater is also a nonprofit. Yeah, yeah. Um, this isn't a big promo for them. I We figured we'd give them a shout out yeah. and, and make some of the episode about it because they are letting us use their space. Yeah, of course. Which we deeply appreciate. And um, I do... Even if yeah, we, we both work here, here as well, even, so. but even if we weren't, yeah, I love this place. You it's know, great. A lot of you know. Sometimes when you're working in an environment or something, you get so used to what's good that all that you can get, be focused on is the bad things. Yeah. And like, dude, this place is awesome. I would love that if we it's can get good. to a spot with enough guests here. Shout out if we can have enough guests in the show that we do it on the stage. Take the curtain off. Have the 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 concrete in the back on the back wall yeah and and like project the green room thing logo on the back which wall. is still in the making at this point in the making of <laughs> we haven't even made it yet um but man i i just i love the theater man i i really so, do there's something about it the there's stage, something about even the stage resonates at a which is cool <laughs> if you're on stage and you play an a anything two twenty four forty it the sub the sub is underneath the stage so if you're a musician you can't not avoid it yeah but man what a spot i do it's not a big reverb but it's enough of a reverb that it's nice it's nice it's nice and it's a great space. some of the engineers that we work with here are awesome justin Lou. Say shout out justin shout oh. out um monitor guy dude matt is amazing at monitors oh matt is so good what's his last name i know matt oh. Stop it. So bad at names. I'm sorry, Matt. Matt, we love you. We apologize. Matt, 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 Matt Will Matt, he even Matt. see this? Oh, what is it? <laughs> Can't remember. Well, you're an awful person. Well, we have Shay on. She'll remind us. Yeah. Shay is the technical director. Yeah. Um, and she's we'll our having, boss. Well, yeah, she's our <laughs> boss. Hi, Shay. <laughs> We're using her 58s. Thank yeah, you. Thank you for letting us use <laughs> this right here. We'll, uh, we'll have her on soon. But... Um, yeah, so I got hired here in 2019, mm. right out of high school, a few months later, because I knew the current operations manager, uh, and she gave me a job. I was really bad. I was really, really, really bad at my job. Wow. Like, I almost what got you fired. You I just, I, I'd never worked, really worked before. <laughs> I, I didn't know what it meant to work for your money. So, and then- So you just weren't a good worker. I really wasn't. Everyone's was like, yeah, we love you as a person, but you suck. <laughs> You that was before your time. I know. And um <laughs> funny I've shaped it so up bad. now, don't worry. It's not it's, it's funny. funny. It's, it's funny. funny now. In the moment it wasn't funny. <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> but um no, and then I remember at the beginning of COVID, like I think the day that we really shut down, I was about to come in and be like, Can I get some more shifts? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna talk to whoever and be like, I would love to just work here a lot more. Man. Um so what were you, what were you doing the day 
that we all got shut down for COVID that day. Was I doing here? I no that day. That not even here. Just or that day. Oh, I mean, I don't know. I remember the couple of days before I played my first gig with Jack Settle at the Mockingbird Theater. Oh, really? <laughs> it was nice. it was March tenth. I remember that vividly. I think it was a Thursday, Friday. I don't know. It was his um, EP release show. What are you laughing about? I, when you're done, I have a story to tell. Oh, good. <laughs> it was it was his EP release show, and I had only met him a, a month or two before. Yeah. And we got coffee, and he said he had this show, but he already had a drummer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, like, a couple weeks before, he's like, hey, so my guy bailed. Can you play? I was like, yeah, I'll play. Yeah, I'll play, yeah. That's it awesome. It was great. I, I love Jack. Um, have, and I don't know if I met him. I don't think you have. You don't have to do that. Yeah. Um, but hmm. um, I saw so I, I remember that. And and then I think I worked the next few, couple of days later and I, I showed up to the building and I couldn't, there's no one here. Like the lights were off everything. I was like, mm-hmm. what is going on? I called Madison and I was like, what's going yeah. on? She's like, oh yeah, we're closed. I was like, good. Glad I drove down here. Not Glad that, I, not me, that yeah. I live that far, but yeah. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, if you go onto the Franklin Theater website, there's a video, I think like a little documentary, I think it's about 10, 13 minutes long. Have you seen it? I haven't seen I've it. I've seen it, yeah, I've okay. seen it a few times. When I worked some of the DFA meetings and stuff, they show it. Um, That they actually, for they talk about what happened when if the theater first closed down and how it affected the theater and the people around it. And yeah. It's actually a nice video to watch. It's a good time. But, Are we going to link it below or no? Yeah, we can. We can. We'll link the we'll link the Franklin Theater's <laughs> website yes. and it's and on there. And then you go it's searching. On there. Yes. If you feel so inclined. Can I tell you a story about what happened to me when COVID first happened? Okay. It's not that I'm bad. Sc- it's, you say it like it's, it's not like that bad. It's just an it inappropriate awful, or bad thing. It was awful timing for Okay, me. go. Go, go, go. Like Pushing my mic back. It may have you. been just that go. My March 10th day that you were talking about. Are you about. serious? My girlfriend at the time broke oh, up with me no. 20 minutes before my shift in the parking lot of the first day working at my new job. First day. She meets me in the parking lot before my shift. You're and kidding. She breaks up with me in the parking lot. In my, she gets in my, she got in my car and broke up with me. You want a hug? It was years ago. <laughs> it was years ago. I'm over it. But, three, um, that was three years ago. It was. It was actually 2019. So it was four years ago. Oh my gosh. COVID. Oh uh, yeah. No. Yeah. You're right. I'm thinking wrong. Was, well, you just wanted to point that out. No. 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 You no. heard it here. I was just thinking wrong. It was. Right before COVID, I just thought the wrong year. Oh, okay. I was going to say, you just I was, wanted to I was thinking of when shout out that girl. Got together in, 2020, in 2019, and then it happened. Okay, okay, okay. But, um, yeah, and then- You're fine, then. I have to go into my new job, re- just literally hurt oh. 10 minutes before, and then three days later, get laid off. <laughs> <laughs> There's this girl on TikTok, you might have seen it, it's this, she like is already like sobbing, and she goes up to, <laughs> to the people, and she's like- like it's fake. Like mm, you know, she's yeah. like pretending to be like a, a waitress. And yeah. She's like, "Here's your food. Oh, you wanted, you wanted a coke with that. I'm so sorry. It just breaks <laughs> down. I'm like, oh. Luckily, my that job that I was, I was at the time, I'm working uh, at a car dealership cleaning cars, so I didn't have to do. Oh, with that's anybody. cool. I was a porter. Can you clean so my car? I still have some stuff. Yeah. You, you heard it here. I'm not doing it for free. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think so, we got a little bit more time left. So when did you get hired again? I got hired May of twenty twenty one. Yes, May of twenty twenty one. It was right um, after. It was right after I had just uh, maybe June, maybe June or July. It was right no, after. I think it was in May because I took a brief hiatus, time off, and then came back. Yeah, in May. Yeah, but of that yeah, year, and then I, I came back. I um. It was right after I'd finished Dark Horse. I'd finished Dark Horse. I started working here, and oh. it, but it was when we were half capacity, and yeah, all the, all the type stuff. So and stuff. I actually got lucky, and I got bumped up to shift, uh, shift leader pretty soon. They had no one Cause Cause because no one. Ryan's wedding. There was a wedding. A cor- there was a, a wedding worker. of a former staff member, and all the current staff was literally leaving. Yeah, that so day, and there was this. What show? It was a big show. It was a, and they had to hire a whole a new comedian. staff. I think it was a, t- it was a, a comedian. comedian. I think it was Henry Cho did like two days straight or something. No, because you worked Henry Cho. Yeah, but it was a year previous from the one that happened. Was a few it really ago. Henry Cho? I, I can't remember. I Whatever. can't remember. But um, I got bad memory. You're right over there. I just falling apart. Move my stand. <laughs> uh, 
If you guys aren't watching on the video, I don't <laughs> yeah, my soul, all of a, you might be able to hear I it because you all of a sudden just I'm, moved everything. I move a lot, guys. It's just the yeah. way I am, okay? Yeah, drummer. I move. I'm Italian. I move. And you're a drummer. And I'm a drummer. Double whammy. True. But um, So um, when when did you start working tech here? About the, we started about the same time. Like uh, July, summer of last I, year. I don't know about summer. It was like fall. Yeah, it was I, like was still August in, or I was still in class, so I really didn't get going until... I think it was August or September-ish of you know, November. last year. Yeah, but it Ish. was... can't remember. Shay brought us on. Yep. And we did I a actually, shift here and there. To be fair, since I started working here, when I did my interview, I told them that I my goal was to work tech, and our manager and look at, at you the time now. told me that it would be happening within weeks and a year and a half, <laughs> a year and a half later. That was a year and a half later. It's all right. Or a year later. It's all right. It happens. Oof. That happens. Um, but it's, it's been really cool to see people coming in and out, uh, like the, oh, yeah. the artists and everything. Oh, yeah. Okay. I guess, so I got to ask, what are some of your favorites that you've worked or more, or even the most even memorable scene? Uh, can it be ones I haven't worked that were here? I mean, I guess, but like, then it's okay. like secondhand. I'll say, I mean, I don't, you do what you want. Oh, one of my favorite ones that I worked was, um, Leroy Parnell. Yeah. I didn't work that one. You definitely didn't. Cause it was me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Continue. <laughs> sorry, sorry. My goodness. Just normally they only have one stage hand. So if you're working, it's not me. Yeah, and if, if I'm, I'm working, working, it's, it's not, not you. you. <laughs> and if we can't work, it's normally Jaron. Um, Jaron, shout out. But he's an amazing guitar player. He, big country guy from the 90s, early 2000s. He's a great slide player. Mm. And he did a show, I think it was almost two hours. And it was just great. He was a, hilarious. He was Wasn't he the guy. one that broke the piano? No, that was. Oh, really? Yes. We should maybe oh. bleep, his, bleep his name out. Oh. Take it out and post. That was beep. <laughs> I have a bleep that we can put on it, actually. Okay. Um, um, now, I, I I know this may be secondhand what you were just saying or whatever, but my favorite show that's ever been here, Newfound Glory was here last you month. You were there. I wasn't working the event, yeah, but, but I was you were there. there. Okay. I, I yeah, was yeah, there that's for fair. Loaded. That's I actually, right. I did work that event. I did work that. What am I talking about? I did work that you event. You did work that event. Yeah. I, I was the one freeloading What there. am I talking about? Yeah. Newfound that- Glory was awesome. <laughs> now, Chad from Newfound Glory is friends with friends of ours. He's yeah. friends with the theater here. He does an event called Movie Gang. And now he actually is uh, starting to work with us in our just running movies in general. Movies in general, yeah. He's been he great. He is a great guy. He's... um. He's, coming, he's been good friends with us now. Yeah. And man, it was a great show. I've been listening to them for a while. If you can't tell, by the way, I was talking last episode on the way I look. I definitely listen to pop punk. Yeah. And um, it was just well, we awesome. Wanna, we want to have him on. That's the At goal. some point. Chad, if you're watching this. Dream my, guest. My people talk to your people. Your people talk to my people. Yeah. And we're just the people. So just talk I might to be us. reaching out soon, actually. Yeah. So. I'll have to have him on. Or maybe his wife too. I know his his wife's yeah, favorite. Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be cool to have him on. Uh, it's just it was a great show. I they they played the hits. They played the new album. It was yeah. an acoustic show with a drum set. So they it was <laughs> acoustic <laughs> bass, acoustic or not acoustic, actually electric basses, but acoustic guitars. And then for a select few songs, he played drums. Um, it was it was just a, it was a great show. I'm also gonna steal one from you that you worked. No, what? you can. I no, think you're what? gonna say. Well, I don't know what it is. I think you're gonna say it, so I'm not gonna steal it from you. you I genuinely you have some, nothing up in my head right it now. It just happened a few weeks ago. The one that isn't newfound glory. You worked it. The, the oh. one with the amazing drummer and the yes, 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 yes. I oh, knew. Guys, it. you won't believe who walked in this door. <laughs> um, okay, Nate Smith on drums. Woo. Victor Wooten on bass. Woo. And to top it all off. Corey Wong on guitar. <laughs> Shout out I, Corey. He liked both of our stories. He did. Thank you, Corey. <laughs> um, I shook Nate Smith's hand. Um, and I just it was it was an amazing moment. I got a lot of video because I just I was like, I'm gonna analyze this so much. Yeah. Nate Smith has been such an inspiration. The way he plays, the man's touch and feel. Such a good pocket. He's so good with big uh, pocket. And then him him and Victor were going, you know, bobbing their heads yeah. like, to get like in sync. I was like, well, oh. the event was actually, it was Africa Nashville hosted by. Um, yes, it was a rental, name, I think, too. Forgetting his name. And I can't believe I'm forgetting it. Um, his name's Jeff Coffin. Yes. I just remembered it. The Jeff saxophone Coffin. player. He Sax- was amazing. Saxophone player for Dave Matthews Band. One of my favorite so bands good. of all time. Yes. So it was an awesome show. I got to stand literally a few feet in front of Victor Wooten and he acknowledged my presence, which Ooh. was awesome. <laughs> as a bass player, he's the man. I actually, 
to be completely candid, before the show, was not a big Victor Wooten fan because what? from the, all the clips and stuff I'd seen as a not 100% bass player, a uh, newly bass player, yeah, all I thought it was was just no, a lot of random notes and a lot mm -hmm. of fanatics and stuff. But the man's man, pocket. Him and he's Nate, great at George is choosing his moments, man. but also I've stolen a lot of stuff from him since that show. Yeah, yeah. Ever since I've been playing bass, all the stuff he did in that show, I've been stealing. His technique and the way that he's able to play like long sustained notes by like tapping on the genius, yeah, yeah. dude. Genius. Oh, um, and I mean Corey Wong is also just a legend in, in and of itself. He is yeah, perfect yeah. at being there without you noticing it. Like yeah. he's just yeah. playing and yeah, he's yeah. playing not stop. Like he's not stop playing. Just lots of notes. He knows how to don't just notice fit it. himself in, in the puzzle he's piece perfect. in the picture. He's, he's too perfect at being right in the middle of just right in the middle. I don't of think all. they can hear you. They can because it's edited and I can make it loud and post. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, um, it was it was a great I, show. The shirt I'm wearing actually, this is the Bacon Brothers. As in, as oh in yeah, Kevin Bacon. You wear shirt a lot. I do. It's a great shirt. It's actually, I'll shirt. I'll tell the story about it. I don't, yeah. I don't really care. It was in 2019. I was w still working staff. It was when I was good. I think. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> and uh, and the Bacon Brothers were there. They were playing their show. I don't know. I don't think they've come back since. I wish they would. I don't think. I heard a rumor. That that they're going to come back well, maybe know. this year. We'll see. Um, and and I saw the shirts from the concessions area, and I was like, you know, if it's 20 bucks, yeah, I'll buy a shirt. It looks like a good shirt. I go over there. The sign says 25. I was like, yeah, screw it. Why not? I give the lady my credit card, charges me 30 bucks. It's like, what? 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 What is what? I jumped up 10 bucks. I'm not stingy or anything, but I was like... Your sign's yeah, wrong. But if we're being honest, that's low-key kind of cheap compared to other merch. Oh, no, yeah. When we went to go see Journey and Toto, we, how okay, much we did went, you spend on that shirt? It was like 60 50, bucks 50, or 50. 50, 60. But we were surprised because normally it's like 80 bucks. Yeah, I always really thought it would be more. Yeah, literally. Um, <laughs> uh, the John Mayer show that was just mm -hmm. here. Uh, Can't even imagine. Sweatshirt. There was a sweatshirt. $95. It's actually not awful. When no, I saw no. Guns N' Roses, wow. sweatshirt, 110 bucks. You're kidding. Serious. Okay. We, should we do an episode on how overpriced things are? I'm down with that. <laughs> not <laughs> not just merch. That's a dig at them. Ticket it's just prices. Like, oh, Ticketmaster. I just bought Plug Chicago ins. tickets. So I, I just bought John Mayer tickets to see me in October, and I bought Chicago tickets Yeah, you literally to see just them. bought them like an hour ago. I literally did. I bought Chicago tickets to see them in September. And like the fees and things, and we're going on a tangent here, was like you know, 30 bucks, 40 bucks. And the tickets were like fifty bucks, so I went from hundred dollars to spending hundred fifty dollars. It's like, like I'm, I'm buying I'm a third ticket. Trying to buy those tickets for us to go see Dave Matthews. Yeah, we're like, trying to go see why Dave are the Matthews. Fees more Dave than Matthews, if you're watching this, you should give us some nice tickets, dude. <laughs> Dave Matthews, if you're watching, the re the way that you have I've grown up on your music is crazy. My dad played Dave Matthews all the time. All oh, my yeah. my childhood, if it like if I get a movie made about myself, the Dave first Matthews. thirty minutes, the soundtrack has to be only Dave Matthews. Like, like, why like 30 minutes? Forrest, why can't it be the whole thing? Like the first 30 minutes of Forrest Gump is when he was a kid. Like, that's the same kind of vibe. You know what I mean? Like, the, the kid years has to be Day Matthews. A little bit of, and then when I go emo, and then it'll be Day Matthews, Guns oh, N' Roses, until I have my emo thing, and then, and then it'll be bad. <laughs> <laughs> then it'll be a lot of music my Mine's parents actually not be a, Mine would be a lot of Michael Jackson. Really? I listened to a lot of Michael Jackson. I had this greatest hits, the two CDs yeah. thing. A lot of Michael Jackson. A lot of wow. Huey Lewis, the greatest hits, the greatest hits of Journey. I remember like, the first time I heard Michael Jackson, I asked my dad if it was a girl. I was I was like like literally eight or nine in the back of my dad's car. And he, I was like, is this a girl? He's like, no, it's a guy. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I, didn't, I was just like, oh, okay. I was just curious. I was like, because well, I, I was listening to, to it. I was like, I couldn't tell, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like, uh, shout out Tracy Chapman. So good, but sometimes she sings. I know it is. Dude, you definitely know Fast Car. Oh. Um, uh, you sing a little bit for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's got that other song. It's like, baby, I got to stay here. I could get my guitar down and play it. <laughs> I won't. Actually, we're running out of time here. We are. <laughs> um, man, she's great. We can cut out that part where I just sang right No, there. we're not um, staying in. Um, she's great, but she can sing really low, too. And sometimes when I first heard her, I thought it was a guy. And I was like, oh. And then I looked it up. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> Man, well, hey, anyway, Nashville's great. I love Broadway. Yeah, we went off on breed of people. a little bit of a tangent we did. there at the end. Um, the Franklin Theater, we love you guys. Shout out the Franklin Theater, love the spot. Yeah, yeah. Love we'll, the spot. we'll put them down below. Um, and we'll shout the socials real quick. Um, Instagram, we can find us on Podcast The Green Room, Podcast with a T, The with a T. Uh, Two T's in there. 
Two T's. Don't forget those. Yep. And on TikTok, <laughs> you can look up the Green Room Podcast. It'll show up. Our username is uh, Podcast T G R. So yeah. there's two T's in that as well. We're so sorry for the it's non-conformity. Okay. It's hard to get. It's hard to get usernames, honestly. Oh my! Well, especially the Green Room. Without paying, you'd for think them. it'd be easy. Literally, it was tough. Um, but just look up the Green Room Podcast on TikTok. It'll show up. My personal Instagram is uh, B D E N underscore Aiden. B D E N Aiden. Uh, follow me. It's a good time. I'm going through a revamp right time. now. It'll be cool. I am on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Massimo D Music, M A S S I M O D Music. Um, I have a YouTube channel as well. If you want to follow me, this Goober is on there. I just called you Goober. Never done that before. I am on there. Um, playing bass, we do drum covers, uh, vlogs, uh, full band covers, mm -hmm. musical chairs. Musical chairs and more musical and more chairs. To come. <laughs> more yeah. to come. I'm trying to think of some more content ideas for that. Um, any ideas, put it in the comments. Please. Please. For both um, him and us, if you have any ideas for us. Yeah. To Again, size. shout out to Liquid Death. Yeah, just shout out to Liquid Death. I would love for you guys to sponsor us. As fan. well as Steve Perry. And you could be sitting right here next to us. Love uh, to have Slash in oh, here. Oh, my man. I, if Steve Perry were like, yes, but you have to fly me out, put me up, I'd fly him out and put him up in my house. He can have my room. I don't care. The man. Yeah, uh, dude. Ooh. Slash recorded his last album here, and he's always in town. Uh, at the Crimson yeah. Garage. Yeah, yeah. Dude, just slide over. <laughs> slide over? <laughs> slide over. to. F we're literally 30 minutes from Nashville. Just slide over. All right. Well, thank you to all our viewers on YouTube yeah, and all the other platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, yada, yada, yada. All of it. And uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for listening and watching. Peace. Ciao.